Hello, my name is Michael Avery from Cadence Design Systems and in this video what I'll be showing is why you should avoid using a library with the name work in any VHDL code. Now this isn't just a beginner's topic, you will find people who've been doing VHDL for 10 years who do not know this and, and still continue to use a library called work, but what I'll show you is why the problem exists in the first place and why you should avoid it. So as a recap of libraries in VHDL, as in any other language, libraries are a way of organizing code for the sake of configuration, uh, development, reuse, and so on, loads of other reasons. And the way in which you do this in VHDL code is if you're defining a file which is going to do something, you refer to other libraries and make use of the contents of those libraries. And as you can see from the first three lines of this file, those are the IEEE libraries which are built into the simulator, the industry standard libraries. Here, however, these are user-defined libraries. So you see here I've named a library called if underscore lib and in the definition of this entity called top here and its architecture I'm wanting to use some elements of that library and in this case I say use if lib that's the name of the library dot and then this thing happens to be the name of a package and all means everything from that package. And if I were to look at this package, this is the file that defines that package. I can see here package name lfpkg, and it just so happens for the sake of this example, it only contains a type definition. So in VHDL, as you will find out soon, if you're not already aware, anything you refer to has to have been compiled already. So when I'm going to compile this file here, that's referring to library iflib, this library has to exist, and in it, there has to be this package with this name compiled already. Otherwise, I won't get past this line in compilation. In order to compile this file by itself, then, I can do this from the command line. And just to show you, we're starting from a blank piece of paper. This is the contents of the current directory. This script here is for removing all tool-generated files. I'll be using this as we go along just to prove that I'm always starting out from a blank piece of paper as, as such. A run script, and also the, these are the two files. So top.v was the file we were looking at, this one, and the package file as we discussed earlier. So if I wish to compile this in the Cadence simulator and the name of the simulator is Excelium, I use this kind of runner command xrun. So this will compile all kinds of different files and what I supply to it is my files I wish to compile and all the other kinds of options, of course. So if I wish to compile this file into a library called iflib, what I have to do is, I wish to compile only. So I'll, I'll use that switch just to save me time and reduce the amount of output we need to consider. And I put minus work. So this specifies I have a library called iflib. This is where I wish to compile this file T package into. Okay, so I do this. And if I were to list the directory now, obviously the compilation has created some files and the place those files got created is just here. So you notice here, this iflib, this is where all the output of that compilation command went. So if I were to list that directory, what I'll find in here is cadence specific files that contain this compilation output. So that's so far so good. So what I'm hoping now is that when I compile this file that's top.vhd, is that everything should work because in my top.vhd, I'm referring to this library iflib and the package in it, which I've already compiled using the previous command. It should work, shouldn't it? So far then, there appears nothing to get excited about. So let's try something different. Instead of compiling the package into the library called iflib, we'll do it into the library called work. So here's a pre command here. And I'll just, to prove we're starting with a blank piece of paper again, we, we can say we only have the files there that we started with originally. Um, so let's go back to this command. We're going to compile this not into the library iflib, but into the library work. So I can do this. So I'm creating a library whose name is literally work, and that compiles. And if we were to list the contents of the directory where this stuff gets put, I can see I've got a, a directory called work here, and inside of that will be the contents of that compilation. And what I'll do now then is, if I wish to refer to that package I've just compiled, it's no longer in the library iflib. I need to change this name to work. And I need to change this first part of that reference to work. Okay, so, you know, this should work, shouldn't it? We should be able to refer to that other library we've just created. So we're compiling this top.vhd again into the library iflib, because that's what we wish to do. But when we do this, we find, hang on a minute, how can this be true? I appear to have done all the things I did before when I compiled the package into some library name. And I do the same thing when the library is called work, literally called work, and it no longer functions correctly. If we go back to here again, in VHDL, when we say library 
work. This name is what's known as a logical library name. This appears in VHDL code effectively. And what all simulators do under the hood is they map this logical VHDL library name to a physical directory. Okay, and of course the tool manages that and each tool from each different vendor will do it differently. However, they all function the same um, because that's what the language reference manual defines. I've got to ask myself, why doesn't this actually function as I want? Okay, and to further compound things, let's try something here. So instead of compiling it into the library called work, I'm going to compile this into iflib. I remember before I did this before and it worked, didn't it? In fact, before I do that, it would be uh, just to prove I'm not cheating. Let's get rid of all these directors again. Clean. So I'm going to compile this file, this package, not into work, but into the library iflib. Now this worked before. Okay, so this is exactly what I did previously, uh, a long way back in the video. And now, however, what will be interesting is I'm not going to change this here. I'm going to leave that as it was. I'm not going to change it to say i off underscore lib, which is what it said the first time we ran this when we started this video. Let's see what happens now. So this we're compiling to the iflib library is called top.vhd. And lo and behold, this works. Now, what we need to do is understand why this is the crux of the problem here. Okay, so in VHDL, as I said before, you have these logical library names. So library work is a logical library name. But it doesn't mean, and this is where the confusion arises, even for people who have been using VHDL for a long time, it doesn't mean a library literally called work. It means the library I'm currently compiling into. And that's the important difference. So the library I'm currently compiling into is whatever I say on the command line. So if the library I'm cur currently compiling into is iflib, then work means iflib. It's as if I had typed iflib here and here. Okay. Syntactically, that is what happens. Now if I change this to not iflib but, you know, something else, or whatever lib. Now, when I compile that, if I say work here, remember that means the current library. And the current library in this case is called whatever underscore lib. So it's as if I typed, instead of work, whatever underscore lib here. So in order to explain this, we need to look at the language reference manual. This is the latest version, which is 2008. And in it, in this predefined language uh, environment section, 16, we can see this definition as already existing inside of the language. So library STD is library standard and library work. So library work is something that exists already in the language. And what it's taken to mean is, if I highlight this, language work is the current working library during analysis, the term they give for compilation. So that already exists. So it's already defined in the library. So it's a waste of time writing library work anywhere because it already exists in the language. And in fact, as we've seen, if you do, the library work that you create is not the same as the language reference manual mean. So actually, the contents of the library I created with the name work is inaccessible. Uh, under every circumstance. The bottom line then, the, to summarise this video, is don't use the library name work literally as some other simulators actually prompt you to do. Um, otherwise you get these problems. Okay? So for that reason, if you do not specify a library when compiling in the cadence tools, run this clean script again just to prove that uh, we're starting from a blank sheet to paper again. So I list the directory. We've just got the files we started with in the first place. So if I were to compile the package again, but I'm going to neglect to specify a library. Now this still compiles, and if I list the D directory where the output goes, which is... I see this directory here called worklib got created for me. Notice its name is worklib. That's the default name that Cadence tool will give, not work, for the reasons we've talked about here. So if you specify no library, then the name of the library will be taken to be worklib. So you'll never end up with this problem that we've just seen. Okay, but all of this should be irrelevant because you should manage your libraries and define exactly what all the library names are. Now, having said that, it's not to say that uh, writing this is always useless. Okay, so you might as well delete that. Saying use work dot something isn't useless because this is useful in cases if I was defining this file and I didn't know what the name of the library I wish to compile it into was. I can put work there as a delayed placeholder, if you like, to say whatever library I decide to compile it into in the future. 
Okay, so it's a useful mechanism. So it's useful to say use work dot some package dot all because it means I don't need to know the name of the library in advance that I'll be compiling it into. Saying library work is a waste of time and creating your own library using this command, say minus work work, that is a bad thing to do as well. Although as you've seen, <laughs> it will still go and compile it and create a directory with the name work. Okay, so I hope you find that useful as you go along. And even if you haven't used VHDL before, it's, it's vital to get you know these things uh, in your head before you start and if you've been using VHDL for a long time you've probably forgotten the reason why you shouldn't do it and so hopefully this served as a good reminder so thanks for your attention and goodbye <music>